Ah, oh, hell. I'm in the wrong game again. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, and some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Echo Flynn's Path. So y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back in. It was a little bit spicy in that last episode, and we're continuing with the spice today, I believe. Oh boy. Oh boy. Anyway, let's jump right in, y'all. Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. I grin as Flynn guides my paws in his briefs, returning a smirk. He's a soft spot again. For his pants down, grip him some more. Ah, uh, I like to tease. I'm a teasing sort. Oh, yeah. I'm about to place one paws on his torso, and Flynn suddenly pulls back. He lets go of my wrists. The expression... Oh, God. Okay. Um. Oh. Okay. I'm about to continue stroking when Flynn suddenly pulls away. He lets go of my wrists. The expression on his face strange again. He's looking for something. I'm confused. I'm still sort of slack-jawed as I stare back at him. What? Slowly, his expression becomes more resolute. Almost dark as he steps back further away from me, folding his arms. Nothing. Just realize that Carl could see us. We shouldn't have done this here. Huh? He's acting like I started this. I feel self-conscious now that he's clearly not interested in continuing. I turn away, slightly. One paw against the car as I angle my body so he can't see my dick anymore. I look back over my shoulder at him, feeling myself getting angrier. Hey, you're the one who... <clears throat> but he's already turned around and heading back towards the pond. I watch him go, feeling bewildered and maybe even a little hurt. Asshole. I muttered under my breath. Did he stop because he decided it w I wasn't up to his standards? That idea hurts even more because I can imagine those are pretty low. I stand there for a while longer, feeling like a complete idiot before finally heading back to the stream. I've picked up all kinds of shit from smearing my body against his dirty truck. I'll be sure not to let him take advantage of me so easily again. We're headed down Elizabeth Street after dropping Carl off. The drive only a little awkward. Flynn's really good at acting like nothing's wrong when he wants to, and I'm totally fine with that right now. That's when I see a set of familiar ears through the window of the convenience store. Hey, is that TJ? Flynn ducks his head to look out my window. Looks like it. He flips a U-turn, which isn't a big deal since no one's on no one's on the road, and pulls it up and pulls up to the parking lot. <clears throat> what are you doing? Uh, stopping by to say hi. Oh, okay. I guess I need to buy some stuff anyway. I look out the window so Flynn can't see the look on my face. I already know that this is a bad idea. TJ's at the register and his ears flick in our direction before he turns to see us. At first he smiles when he sees me, but then his ears fall flat as he sees Flynn come in behind me. Jenna pokes her head from behind TJ and now I know this is a really bad idea. They're both a little dirty and TJ has his backpack on. I wave at them to let them know I've, been th I've seen them before moving towards the back of the store. I need to get some bottled water since I don't really like drinking from the faucet in the motel. I hear Flynn say something as he walks up to them, and I silently hope that by the time I get back, everything will be magically resolved. Because the old corner market closed, this is the only place where you can buy food, aside from the diner. Looking around at the selection, I can see why Flynn takes a 30-minute drive to Peyton to get his food. I grab a few water bottles and head back to the front. My hopes of a resolution are dashed as I see the awkward situation unfolding in front of me. TJ's standing on the other side of Jenna now, keeping her between him and Flynn. No one's saying anything as I get to the register, the air tense and TJ fidgeting with his with his facial fur. As I pull out my wallet, I look over at Jenna. Hey, uh, how was your hike? Fine. Hot. Ah. A red fox I don't recognize takes the two dollars I hand to him. I feel Flynn shift around next to me, then I hear him take in a breath. Hey, TJ, did you- Hey, Flynn, did you forget what happened yesterday? I cringe. Jenna's tone is sharp, and now I just wish I could turn invisible. Huh? Can't you tell he doesn't want to talk to you? Flynn doesn't say anything. The tension is so thick in the air, I feel like I'm back in the slimy pond. The cashier fox pauses in handing me my change, staring at Flynn and Jenna. Uh, thanks. I almost yell as I reach out for the money, as if the volume of my voice will make everyone forget and for provide Flynn the opportunity to escape. It doesn't work. We're not kids anymore, Flynn. You can't just treat us like crap and expect us to act like it's okay when you decide we're worth talking to again. <laughs> One second, y'all. Water time. Okay. Flynn's hunched, Flynn's hunched forward, staring off to the side towards the back of the store. DJ suddenly heads for the door and I can see his face twitching as he passes me. Jenna follows him, past Flynn, before turning around as she reaches the door. If you want to talk to us again, then you're going to have to act like an adult and apologize. Otherwise, later. 
She exits, leaving us in the most awkward, painful silence I've ever heard in my life. The clerk openly stares at Flynn. I fumble with the change in my wallet, trying to pretend like nothing happened. Uh, do you wanna... Flynn, turn Flynn turns and walks out the door. I watch him get in his truck, then pull out, his face expressionless. For a while, I stare at the empty parking space as I slowly shove my wallet back into my, pa into my back pocket. The clerk, without anyone else to stare at, is now staring at me. Annoyed, I look right at him. What? He stares back at me, expression vacant. Huh? He's young, but the patchy fur and missing teeth and the look in his eyes tells me everything I need to know. I suddenly realize where I am and where I come from, and this alone quashes all the good feelings I have left of the day. This fox in front of me practically embodies all the problems of this small town. I feel such a bizarre, intense wave of hatred for him that I have to leave the store. Pressing the two water bottles against my chest with one arm, I shove my free paw into my pocket, staring at the ground as I walk back to the hotel. I'm sick of him thinking that he can do whatever he wants without any sort of consequence. Jenna rustles around in a drawer before using her hip to close it with a snap as she turns to me. <clears throat> I'll apologize to him once he apologizes for ruining the trip. I open my mouth and close it again. Of course, asking Jenna to make, f to make up with Flynn is a lost cause. It's like asking Carl to take off his beanie. Sitting on the bed, I glance at the bathroom door, faint sounds of TJ's shower coming from within. I hear Jenna sigh before the bed wall, but she takes a seat next to me. I'd probably feel bad if he hadn't fucked everything up already. I rub the back of my neck with a hand, trying to think of something I can say to convince her. It's just, it's just that Flynn is always like that. He doesn't mean anything bad. Yeah, well, I'm sick of having to deal with it. He needs to learn how to not talk like an asshole. This is one of the reasons why Flynn never fucks with Jenna, or really says anything to her at all. She's kind of exempt from the whole unspoken pact we made to just let Flynn, Flynn's dickishness slide. Even sensitive TJ accepts it and takes the playful ribbing well enough. I hear the shower shut off, followed by the high-powered whoosh of the hotel's cheap dryer. Being a lynx, TJ probably had to stand in that thing for a good ten minutes before he was even damned. We're adults now. If he wants to get anywhere in life, he needs to shape up. He's getting along all right, Jenna snorts. Yeah, if he's planning to stay here for the rest of his life. I mean, what's wrong with that? I can tell Jenna's giving me a look, but I don't give her the satisfaction of turning my head to see it. Seriously? Anyway, it's clearly a defense mechanism. He feels vulnerable without his I'm an asshole blanket. I mean, you're not a psychiatrist yet, Jenna. I'm not going to be a psychiatrist, but you don't need to, but you don't need a psych degree to see it. I don't respond, not seeing the point in arguing about Flynn any further. Jenna stretches then Jenna stretches and gets up to go over to her laptop on the small table while I lay back on the bed, closing my eyes. Absent-mindedly, I pull my phone out, discovering a text from Leo. Forgot to tell you that they were, they're having a surprise party for Carl tomorrow. I frown and type out a quick response. You're telling us this now? It's not until next month. What's up? Jenna's looking up from her laptop at the expression on my face. Leo says we're having a surprise party for Carl tomorrow. Oh, yeah. You knew? Well, yeah, Leo told us on the drive back from the river. My phone buzzes again. Sorry, but we're going to get a, we're going to the store tomorrow to get some presents, so don't worry about it. I frown. This is kind of weird. A whole month early? Jenna shrugs and looks back down at her laptop. Come on a second, y'all. More water. Oh man. I do love me some sparkling water. Anyway, something to do, I guess. I guess. I type another response to Leo again. I have a lot to do tomorrow. I was planning to get some footage in the morning. Leo's always been weird. Do you follow any of his accounts? He's always posting pics of his food and stuff. My phone buzzes again. I guess I can get the present for you, but you're definitely going to be going to the party, and then we're going to go out to see a movie. I suppose that doesn't sound too bad, as long as I'm able to get at least something done for the project. Something is still bothering me about the whole get-together, though. The whole get-together, though. I can go to the party, but I might need to stay and do more project stuff. What about Flynn? I send that one with some hesitation, feeling like me and Leo are conspiring behind Flynn's back. I don't remember what I did behind Leo's back with Flynn and my toes curl reflexively in a cringe. Yeah, technically it's none of Leo's business, what I do, but it doesn't change the feeling of wrongness I have about it. I tore with the idea of texting Flynn as well, but knowing him, he probably won't respond right now. I'm sorry, to you at least. I look up from my phone at Jenna, who's cackling, who's clacking busily away on her laptop. For what? Her typing pauses. Because pissing Flynn off like that is just going to make this an even shittier vacation. I sigh and look back down at my phone, waiting for Leo's response. 
Well, I don't know. I guess he needed to hear it from someone. My phone buzzes again. I had to talk with him. It's fine. I'm about to say something else to Jenna, but I can hear TJ starting to open the door, so I just shut my mouth and close my eyes again. Well, alrighty. Wednesday. I guess it's not party time. I actually end up sleeping the next day. Leo tries to coax me to go along, but I mumble something about needing to finish my project. Next thing I know, it's an hour later and the hotel and the motel room is empty. I chastise myself for the late start I'm getting and roll out of bed, skipping a shower and instead gathering up all my equipment. I decide to head to the old school, mostly out of convenience. It's less than a mile up Main Street. It's broken down and vandalized to hell. It looks great through the camera. The original Echo School was built back in the early 1900s, but it was torn down and rebuilt in the 50s. It's the building that I'm looking at now. Apparently all grades were combined into this one building, which was sectioned off by three floors. Echo Elementary, Echo Junior High, and Echo High. After 1980, there were too few students to keep it functional, and they started by and they started bussing everyone to Peyton instead, closing Echo School down. It's a two-story brick schoolhouse with a basement and about 30 rooms inside. I remember my parents saying that after it closed down, it was a rite of passage to sneak into the school at night and graffiti up the walls. Basically, everyone drew a pentagram. I set the camera up to get a few shots of the outside of the school, making sure to emphasize the graffiti on the front and avoid the white soccer goal. Apparently, Echo was still putting the field to use. The windows are foggy, and though there are dozens of squares of missing glass, of glass missing, it's pitch black inside. I calculate in my mind how long I'll be speaking over this portion of the footage, realizing that it probably won't be longer than 10 or 15 seconds. I feel a, flare, I feel a little flare of annoyance at the thought of how much, I, how much I'm putting into this and how little I'm getting out. I wonder if this is really the kind of thing I want to be doing and not for the, and not, and not for the first time. After about half an hour of trying different angles, I finally straightened up, wiping my forehead. The sun is up to the point of warming the top of my head, and I know that within half an hour I'll be burning up. I start packing up my camera when I feel a different sensation on the top of my head. A slight pressure and a prickle, the feeling that I'm being watched. I look back up at the school building. It's quiet, broken, and stoic, like it has been for the past few decades. Still, my eyes are drawn to the second floor, specifically to the window on the far right. I stare hard at it, narrowing my eyes. Behind the glass in the dark room, something curves out from the right side of the window. It's a lighter color, and it stands out in stark contrast against the black of the rest of the windows. It could be anything, really. But as I stare at it, I get the same vibes from it as I do from Carl's horns. I stare at it, waiting to see if it moves, morbidly imagining a face peering around the corner at any moment. Picturing Carl suddenly jumping out to stare at me, stare at me from the window is kind of funny. But also creepy, because I can't imagine what he'd be doing up there. The hairs on the back of my neck stand up, and I look around, kind of hoping that someone might be nearby. It's deserted, of course. My only company being the sun-baked road and dried sagebrush. I turn my attention back to that spot next to the window, half expecting there may be a horn to be gone. It's still there, though. Not having shifted at all from, the fir from when I first spotted it. I shift the strap of the camera bag onto my shoulder and stand up straight before moving a little closer to the building, next to the doors for a better look. Maybe, maybe it's a handle to something. Maybe it's a handle to an old watering can. Uh, maybe for a class project forgotten long ago. Maybe... I shrug off the feeling and turn to leave. Enter. The. School. Something itches in the back of my brain. I look back at the door and I can tell right away that there isn't anything holding it shut. At least not on the outside. Maybe I could get a few shots of what's in there. I walk slowly up to the door. A thin piece of plywood. Definitely not what was here originally. A small tin, no trespassing sign hangs from it. Almost completely rusted the through. I give the door a tentative push and it instantly gives way, sliding noisily across the concrete ground. Inside, there's a staircase right in front of me. To the left and right, there are wide, darkened hallways. I'm just crossing over the threshold when I realize what I'm doing. Even if I did get some good footage, it would have been it would have been from breaking into the place illegally. I'd basically be filming a crime for a, a crime for a school project. The floor creaks above my head and I realize just how stupid this is. I turn back around making sure to shut the rickety door behind me fully before I start back towards the road. It was a dumb idea, sure. I've come up with a lot of stupid ideas, but for some reason I can't shake the feeling that had been that had been especially weird. I'm at the end of the road when I remember the horn at the window. I don't turn around. So, how do you even know that, that he's been here? As you know, eyes Leo as we make our way up the walk, the walk to Carl's house. As I'm looking up at the mansion, I think of how you imagine a lot of things being bigger when you're younger. Not Carl's house. I always forget how big it is where I, when I see it again. 
Even kids from Peyton wanted to hang out with Carl because of it. Carl is, Carl is here like 95% of the time. Besides, how would he get around without his parents? He doesn't say anything as TJ bounds up to the door and rings the doorbell while balancing a cake against his chest. <laughs> Everything is so old-fashioned here. TJ seems to have cheered up since the incident a few days back. At least that's what he's been putting out so far. Sometimes it's hard to tell with TJ. We wait a while, but there's no answer. Jenna looks pointedly at Leo, who pointedly ignores her. He's probably asleep. And how did we wake him up? I want to ask where Flynn's at, but even mentioning his name around TJ seems risky. He's look Leo's looking up at a window to the right of the door, about ten feet off the ground. You know, if I boost you up, you'd be able to reach... Are you kidding me? I shift the bag of presents I'm holding, glancing down at the red tissue paper on the top. So, uh, what did I get Carl? Leo doesn't seem to notice me, continuing to frown at Jenna. How else are we going to wake him up? Oh, I don't know. Maybe by sending him a text in advance to have him meet us somewhere, rather than just do just going to his house completely unannounced? Leo huffs, and I can see his face getting red under his fur. Jenna has a fair point, but I still felt bad for the wolf. I mean, he's usually here, isn't he? Let's not fight, guys. It's supposed to be a party. TJ genuinely dis TJ's genuinely disappointed voice seems to put a pause on the tense mood, and Jenna sighs before looking up at the window. All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks. Your tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.